Welcome to today's refreshing conversation. Today's guest is Shubhendu Sharma, a young entrepreneur who's taken up the challenge of urban afforestation in India. Aforest is a business that is creating maintenance-free native forests in urban spaces. Shubhendu Sharma, the founder of Aforest, has adapted the Japanese Miyawaki method to bring back trees lost to development. His dream is to nurture pockets of biodiversity in our homes, schools, offices and factories. Thanks to location partner Vivanta by Taj. Shubhendu, tell me why a forest? Today, uh, we are making around 117 cars every minute. And in the very same minute, we are losing 36 football fields of forest. I strongly believe that the human development, uh, the industrial progress and the standard of living has to develop at a certain pace. And at the same pace, in hand in hand with the e economic development, we have to enhance our environmental habitat. So I believe that the industrial development, the economic development and the environmental enhancement has to go hand in hand. And that's the reason we have a company like Forest, which is an end-to-end -end service provider to give you a 100-year-old forest in just 10 years or to give you a self-sustaining natural forest uh, in just two to three years, which uh, is so dense that one cannot simply walk into it, which has 300 trees every thousand square feet. Now, tell me, how does the Miyawaki method work? I mean, how do you get, you know, a hundred-year-old forest? In, in ten years. Yeah, in ten years, exactly. Okay. Miyawaki method works on a theory called uh, potential natural vegetation, mm -hmm. which uh, means that if a piece of land is deprived from a human intervention, naturally a forest will grow on that. Mm -hmm. And this forest, which has grown naturally, will have only native species of that area and the, that will be a maintenance-free forest. The Miyawaki method is simply amplification of this natural process of growth by providing the microclimate which enhances the growth of a forest naturally. So when we make a forest using Miyawaki method, we start with the soil survey. So we find out what all nutrition the soil lacks. Uh, we do a native species survey of that area. So if I go to if I'm making a forest in Rajasthan, I'll survey the Rajasthan species. If it is Bangalore, I have surveyed the native species so of the Bangalore. The chances of survival and thriving of those trees is, yes. is much higher. Yes, yes. I, I survey these species and make a database of uh, all the species. Out of this database, based on the soil condition, we uh, develop a species list that these are the species which can be planted in this type of soil. Then based on the priority, whether it is a flowering forest or a forest which attract more birds or if it is in a natural farm, a forest which produces seasonal fruits, based on these priorities, all the species will be decided that these are going to be planted. And around 50 to 100 different species are mixed together and planted in a minimum area which we take is 1000 square feet, okay. which can be even in a backyard of a house, mm. which will have 300 trees. Wow. So today we are making forests in the backyards of house which has uh, a capacity to give you seasonal fruits throughout the year. Lovely. And um, has all the biodiversity which you need. Tell me what are the biggest challenges mm -hmm. you've come across mm -hmm. in a getting people used to the idea of an urban forest mm -hmm. in small spaces yeah. and b developing a business around a forestation. So the biggest challenge was to Number one, uh, get this methodology in minds of the people. Second was uh, the original Miyawaki method is uh, really uh, quite expensive uh, methodology. We had to do a lot of experimenting and so now at one third of the original Miyawaki method, we have our own methodology which is... Which works for India. Yeah, which works for India. Another one is uh, when we talk about a forest, uh, in urban setups, uh, we are very afraid of snakes. Mm. So, you know, people always ask where snakes will be there. Well, uh, snakes are one of the species, you know, which has to live on the same planet. If you take away the home of, uh, you know, any reptile, 
including snakes they'll come and you know enter into the house in our living spaces so a forest like this acts as a edge habitat where you know they can find a home a shelter so that they do not intervene with uh, our our uh, living spaces tell me how much would it cost me mm-hmm. to put up a thousand square foot forest in bangalore it will cost around 1.5 lakhs 1.5 yeah. lakhs yeah. and that's the entire cost of the entire including everything including the trees including the soil work which we do including the manpower that's the machinery dead cheap. yeah <laughs> that's dead yes, cheap i mean that you, that you're talking about the 3 years of maintenance as well and uh, no, the maintenance uh, has to be done in form of watering and deweeding which is not okay much not expensive. expensive okay yeah, yeah. all right okay uh, what what a forest takes to get maintained is half of the water which goes to a lawn so if you're having a lawn you want to save half of the water and have 30 times more green surface area go for a forest like this what a fantastic idea um what's the total area of forest that you've put up so far i mean your business is only two and a half years old and it obviously would have taken a little while to even sort of get your first project and get going yeah two months ago we crossed 1 uh, lakh uh, square feet fantastic yes, which is like 36000 trees Yes. Yeah. Well, you know although in the in the bigger scheme of things it's a small number mm-hmm. it's a big number for a startup. How big is your team? Uh, we have uh, four people working with us. Okay. And how are you financially? Are you are you self-funded? Is is there enough money coming in in terms of projects to support your growth? Yeah. So we are a bootstrapped uh, self-funded startup and okay. uh, uh I mean to run the show of course you know you have to have a continuous inflow of money but the type of work which we do the 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 Mercedes Benz version of the high quality work for a price of a nano so <laughs> that's how you know we can put it in a easy Are way. you going to change yeah. that are you going to change the pricing so you you can thrive better as a business Yes I think uh, uh, the 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 worth of a forest uh, is a lot more when it comes to in comparison to landscaping or you know uh, any uh, urban farming methods but at the same time i want to keep it so affordable that you know we can make it anywhere and everywhere mm. so i don't know if the costing will get changed or not but uh, definitely we are going to make more and more forest and if that requires changing of the costing why not so what's your goal in terms of you know let's say acreage how many acres of forest do you want to bring back do you have a goal like that okay so the goal is to bring back the entire forest cover which we have lost in the cycle of development how much is that and or at least what percentage would you say so in india the ideal forest cover which our country should have is 33% and right now what we have is uh, 24% so even the government is trying and you know the local bodies and everyone is trying to get this 24% into 33%. So right now I'm working on uh, projects where we give away all our methodology and know-hows and the databases of these native species which we are uh, developing and put the entire methodology in a step by step method where using it anyone can make a forest in their own backyards without our physical presence so you're going to give away the business i'm going to give away the methodology and i'm going to continue the same business i mean we live in a we we live in the internet world right now you know so there is yeah, nothing nothing's a secret yeah, anyway nothing is a secret and that there are no patents even if you have patents there are no ways that you know we should be worrying about you know methodology uh, going away it's very important to share your methodology in order to get it improved because mm. that's the point where we will have 1 lakh more minds you know working on the same method so if by two people working together reduce the cost of mia working method by 66% you know why not have these super smart people who are already uh, taken an initiative to make a forest on their own using our methodology definitely a huge a significant improvement will happen and that will enable us to reach our goal which is like bringing back the natural forest i must say you're very brave in a taking on the task of a forestation in an urban rapidly developing setting mm-hmm. and b you know being willing to share your methodology so openly uh, and also very uh, 
you know, there's a lot of foresight in, mm -hmm. in what you're saying. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I can really appreciate where you're coming from. It, it, Thanks a lot. Uh, it takes a lot of, I think, self-contentment and belief in the notion, uh, belief in the concept of afforestation to be able to think about it in yes. such a holistic, long-term manner. Tell me, you know, what is your background? You know, what were you doing before this and how did you get inspired to even get into this? Uh, I worked for Toyota uh, for almost two and a half years after completing my engineering. So, as an industrial engineer, it was like a dream come true, you know, getting into a, a company like Toyota where everything which comes into industrial engineering actually got started. My uh, job was to, you know, get these new models uh, into the country and get their parts developed at different suppliers. And that was the same time when uh, Dr. Miyawaki, whose methodology is the background of a forest methodology, uh, came to India to just deliver a talk about, you know, making a forest in Toyota factory premises to make it a zero emission company. And I was sitting in that room, you know, listening to him. And when I saw his work, uh, I almost decided then and there that this is what is going. Uh, I am going to do for the rest of my life. What does the work that you do at A-Forest mean to you at a personal level? So before starting A-Forest, I used to make cars. And it's not an easy thing to make cars. And I was doing, you know, this bringing uh, a, a million parts together and finally delivering a quality vehicle, which gives you a sense of accomplishment. but. The moment this product is out at the factory, the quality and uh, the, the quality of this product, you know, goes on depleting. Downhill, yeah. yeah. Because that's how the industrial products are made. But when you start with the forest, when you, when you start in the natural cycle of making things, you start with such a small seed and you see it growing into a tree. And the sheer pleasure of you being existent enough to get, you know, these 36,000 seeds getting converted into such such beautifully grown bigger trees is uh, is something which you know nobody else can give it to you because you have to do it yourself and nobody can you know take it away from you because that has already happened and then you get these you know enormous amount of birds and small animals and you see a barren land you know getting converted into a total biodiversity hub which is uh, which, which has so much of life in it that you have to simply go there, stand and experience, you know, your accomplishment. It cannot be expressed in the words. And that feeling and, and the high to get into this feeling again and again is what keeps me driving to make more forests, to keep me doing what I'm doing right now. Fantastic. You know, the way I look at it, Shubhendu, you've got a multifold task here. One is to educate people mm -hmm. on on the fact that it's okay to have an urban forest, mm -hmm. okay, and how to have it that it's that's pretty simple and low cost in comparison to the typical, you know, landscaping options available. Yeah, yeah. Second is you have to build a business on this new idea yeah. that you have to educate people on. And third is, you know, the problem of deforestation is so big, yeah. there's so much to do. Yeah. So I wish you all the best and it's really inspiring so to see someone as young as you, uh, you know, who's taking on such a big challenge very bravely mm -hmm. and looking at it with, you know, at such a holistic uh, and a, a from a very sort of, like I said before, a very self-contented perspective. So congratulations and all the best. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Join our mailing list at chaiwithlakshmi.in forward slash subscribe and keep in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus and Pinterest.